I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're just going to take a moment. Um, Commissioner Moore, I'd like to say a quick prayer. Everybody can bow their heads. Dear Lord, watch over us and guide us through this difficult time, fighting things not seen. Please bless our hospitals, doctors, first responders, and all our departments in Joggle County that are working around the clock. Surely we can summon an awareness of the Holy One as a living, caring reality we share be miles ahead. We can bear the uncertainty of answers to our questions if we feel that the one who is in charge cares for us, agrees with us when we are sad and, and wills our good. This has been the yearning and the confidence of believers throughout the ages. Now faith is an insurance of things hoped for, the, the conviction of things not seen. In the Apostle Paul, in the letter to the Hebrews, these things are not less real for not being seen. In the midst of the unknown, O Holy One, may I, may I be made newly aware of you. Amen. 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 Thanks. Thank you, Jim. Okay, we're going to open the meeting here. Um, the Commissioner's Office is requesting the Board approve and execute the minutes for the meeting of March 10, 2020. Uh, motion, please. So moved. Second. Commissioner Moore? Yes. Aye. Aye. Okay. And then the Commissioner's Office requesting the Board approve and execute the minutes for the emergency meeting of March 12, 2020. Er, 2020. Yeah. So moved. Second. Yes. Aye. Yes. Okay. And then the Commissioner's Office requesting the Board approve and execute the minutes for the emergency meeting of March 13, 2020. So moved. Second. Commissioner Moore? Yes. Aye. Aye. Okay. And then the Commissioner's Office requesting the Board approve and execute the minutes for the meeting of March 17, 2020. So moved. Second. Commissioner Moore? Yes. Yep. Aye. Okay. And the Commissioner's Office requesting the Board approve and execute the minutes for the meeting of March 24, 2020. So moved. Second. Commissioner Yes. Aye. Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner's Office, uh, Jerry. Okay. On uh, March 25th, for the Sheriff, I approved and executed the Ohio Department of Public Safety Office of Criminal Justice Services subgrant award agreement for grant number 2019-JG-A02-6468 for video camera replacement in the amount of $25,975, $12,987.50 from OCJS, and $12,987.50 from the County General Fund. This grant is for the period of January 1st, 2020, and December 31st, 2020, uh, April 6, 2020, uh, concurred with Hamden Township Trustees in not requesting a hearing on liquor license being requested by J. Jalaram Hamden LLC, doing business as Hamden Corners, located at 13906 GAR Highway, Chardon, Ohio. And then for, on April 6th, I also approved for water resources, approved and executed the service contract agreement with Vine Court Landscaping and Gas Line Services Incorporated to perform excavating and landscaping services at various locations within the department for a three-year period, 2020, 2021, and 2022, and an amount not to exceed $7,500, $2,500 per year. And also, uh, financials for March 31st included a, a transfer from the coroner's office into a new COVID-19 expense account to prepare for possible future needs, and a supplemental from the sheriff's office in their law enforcement block grant equipment account for the camera replacement expenses. Uh, encumbrances included, among other things, a contract PO from aging to West Geauga Plaza for rental payments on the West Geauga Senior Center, and then vouchers $50,000 for maintenance to CMRS for postage for our postal machine. Many invoices from the Sheriff's Office to University Hospitals for inmate medical care 
2018, $669.08. 2019, $23,936.13, and so far for 2020, $18,579.37. Only invoices designated as inmate medical care. Uh, and then revenue certifications, a certification from the Common Pleas in, in their court technology and drug court funds for additional grant funds received from the state. Thank you, Jerry. Okay. Um, Moving along, item nine, uh, county engineer, Nick. Hey, Tim. Yeah. You forgot Adrian. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I, sorry. Yeah. He's <laughs> yeah. so easy to forget. <laughs> yeah. We're all sitting right now. This so. is, really, this is what we're here for is you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so today's financials uh, include a transfer from the general fund to the sheriff's contract services account to return appropriations for refunded inmate medical costs. Uh, among the financials is cash transfer from the general fund to public assistance for their fourth quarter state fiscal year 2020 mandated share um, and also from the general fund to the law enforcement block grant for the county match on uh, the Ohio criminal justice uh, service grant 2019-JG-A02-6468 video camera replacement project. And among the vouchers, um, there is, and, and I want to make you aware this is not in my initial report, this is something I, I found uh, later in the afternoon, there is, in ADP, there is a $3,239.97 uh, reimbursement to Chuck Walder for three laptops that he purchased from Micro Center. Um, we are paying $240 worth of sales tax on this because he had to use his personal credit card and Micro Center would not accept the, uh, the certificate, blanket certificate of exemption. So he used his personal card to, to buy some computers for his office? To for for, for him, uh, Pam, um, and Kate, and Kate Pam. So I'm assuming because they had to work from home and they didn't have a laptop already. So, okay. so just so you're aware of that. Um, and apparently, uh, we, we do on occasion, in, in the event of an emergency, in this sort of circumstance, do reimburse people sales tax for things like this, according to the auditor's office. Um, other vouchers include 104105 from the commissioner's office to Ravenwood Center for their, our second quarter 2020 commitment, and 72596 from the sheriff's office to Gailey Chevy of Aurora for two new model year Chevy Tahoe SUVs. And finally, a revenue certification from the Department of Development, Community and Economic Development in their Community Development Fund for additional admin money in 2020. Um, just regarding the SUVs, um, I talked to the sheriff about those. It's our time, maybe you could touch on our we, these were first of all. These were budgeted for these two vehicles. Yes, they yeah. were budgeted, ordered in January, and delivered in February. Gotcha. Okay. And then um, is that because um, that, that just kind of are we switching over to the Chevys? You think, or is that the well the new uh, the, the, we talked about it before the Fords mm -hmm. were switching over to a new design, the electric or something. Uh, or well, a hybrid vehicle, yeah. <laughs> and it's the first year of that. And, and so far, from our, my understanding, is they have. Several haven't even been delivered to various agencies that ordered them, and there's already nine to ten recalls on them. Okay. So we wanted to stay away from a new model vehicle that we would have a lot of issues with, so we went with the uh, Chevy. Okay. Good, good. Okay. <clears throat> and, you know, I talked to the sheriff a little bit last night to him about just, you know, we said a lot of PDs around the area are starting to use them as well. Yep. Um, and that they're, uh, they have a little more room in them. Um, and again, that these were uh, budgeted for. Yeah, that, and there were, there were about $1,500 more right. a piece than what the Explorer is. But when we go to resale those and trade, or not trade them in, a little better, go to auction, we'll get, we'll, we'll recoup that money. Okay. Because it'll be worth more for, uh, you know, when we sell them, when we're done when we go to auction. Okay. <laughs> so it's basically about the same price. Very good. Okay, thank you. Good. Um, any other questions or comments related to financials? No? Okay, if we could get a motion to approve the financials, please. So moved. Second. 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 Second
Yes. Thank you, Adrian. I appreciate it. Um, okay, now Nick. Shane. Oh, Shane. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, uh, morning, guys. This morning we have three items on the agenda for two projects. First project is Taylor Wells County Highway 28, Section A. We will be uh, resurfacing the entire section of road and realigning the north end of Taylor Wells so that it uh, more properly aligns with the township section north of 322. Uh, that project is a locally funded project and it uh, would go out to bid on Thursday and bid opening is scheduled for April 29th. The second project is a culvert project on Russell Road uh, after going through our paperwork, uh, we had not submitted the first resolution, so that is on the agenda for today. And then the uh, plans to replace five culverts on Russell Road this year will preface a project, a resurfacing project for next year uh, on Russell Road. So we like to do the culverts uh, in advance of the project, make sure that if there's any uh, settlement or issues, you know, they're resolved before we go and put new road surface on those roads. Okay, thanks. Um, just a quick question off the subject of this it, it, with the engineer's office. It, it, are we working at full, um, with a full staff over there right now? I mean, do you guys send people home or what, what's uh, going on there? The design staff is at work from home. Uh, a lot of our maintenance uh, department is on administrative, uh, stay at home. Uh, we're continuing to press forward with the uh, roadway maintenance projects and, and getting them ready for uh, bidding and ready for construction. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hopeful that uh, as this COVID-19 winds down that we'll be able to resume a lot of that effort. Uh, our maintenance crews were very fortunate over the last year and a half to have done maintenance on many of our roads and are scheduled for work this year. Mm -hmm. So we were quite ahead of the schedule, even looking at starting work on next year's project this spring. Uh, it doesn't look like that's going to happen, but uh, we are in good shape for that uh, regard. And fortunately, it isn't snowing as much now as it was, so uh, mm -hmm. our guys and gals are able to stay home as much as possible. So, Chris, you may be able to answer this, like with the um you know, going out to bid for these projects and, you know, getting ready for the summer and um, God forbid this thing carries on longer than anticipated and, um, you know, priority shift. Are we locked into these bids if we start accepting them to do this work? You can, we, you can have a bid opening and accept bids and if we have to, you can reject a bid. You, you don't have to, you don't have to you do, do the project. If, award, yeah. um, but if we get to that point, then just I mean, I'm not saying that's, I'm just saying if it, if it ever got to a point where we need to start shuffling around, prioritizing um, where resources are going and, you know, roads may be one of the most important, but if not, you know, once we once we enter into these agreements, we, we're still able to... Um, All of this is, is just to approve specifications okay. to advertise to bid. Okay. Um, once bids are open, um, then you have a time period where you can award or you can reject. Okay. 60 days. 60 days, okay. Thank you. So if you would be open the end of April, so you'd have until the, well, end of June. End of June. I see. July. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, if we could get a motion on number nine, please. So moved. Second. <laughs> yes. Hi. Yes. Okay, 10 and 11. Okay. All right, 10 and 11, Shane, is that you again? Yeah, that's that's the Russell Road culvert project. Okay. Uh, uh, item 10 is the first resolution, and item 11 is uh, requesting the board approve the plans and uh, okay. execute the resolution to order the bids. Okay, motion on 10 and 11, please. So move. Second. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Twelve. Item twelve on the agenda um, is requesting the board award bid to uh, Gridline Incorporated for the replacement of the Tilden Road Bridge 
and Troy Township. We had nine bidders, eight of them were awardable. Uh, the grade line bid was $153,911.25. They represented the lowest and most responsive. We do have a $75,000 OPWC grant on that, so um, our portion is 78000 Nine hundred and change. Any questions? Okay. Motion, Motion, please. So move. Second. Yes. Okay. Yes. Item thirteen on the agenda is requesting the board award the bid to Roniac Paving for the asphalt resurfacing of Aquila Road sections D through E in Clarendon Township. In the amount of $533,247.50. There were four bids on this project, all were awardable. Um, we do have an 80% match on grant money for this project. Great. Okay. Motion, please. So move. Second. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Okay, Planning Commission. <coughs> okay. Okay. Uh, the plan before you is for a replant of two sublots at the end of Creekview Trail in Bainbridge Township, sublot 10 and sublot 26A. Uh, 0.16 acres are going to be subdivided from 26A and added to sublot 10 to increase its uh, buildable area. And then the remaining of uh, remaining area of 26A is going to be converted to open space and be, is, be known as Block B. So it's going to be taken out of development. Uh, the HOA will be taking over the ownership of Block B, and they are also going to be recording a supplemental amendment to the covenants and restrictions to describe that change. Okay. Did you want to uh, read that, Christine? The Planning Commission is requesting the board to approve and execute the replant of sublet numbers 10 and 26 AF Canyon and subdivision in Bainbridge Township. Motion, please. So move. Second. Commissioner Boyer? Yes. Commissioner Boyer? Aye. Commissioner Lester? Yes. contract which is the combined public communications is the telephone system for the inmates um, it's no cost to us they basically pay us to allow that and they're adding a couple things where they're going to do like the law library online uh, one of the problems we have with the current law library is they like to rip pages out the inmates will rip pages out of the law books when they're preparing their own defense and all kinds of stuff so we're constantly replacing the books so uh, this is going to provide an online service for that at no cost. It will it, it'll be deducted from our um, from our revenue that we get back from CPC. And then they're also going to set up uh, online visitation. So that it's my understanding that they'll be able to log in and do like video visitation from home, mm -hmm. um, you know, at the designated time. So as long as they have a camera with a computer with a camera, it goes into the CPC system. And, Routed and they'll be able to do online video visitation. Okay. Any questions? No. Okay. Motion, please. So move. Second. Yes. Right. Yes. Are you doing this next one? Yes, I've got I've got the next one. Roger was not was not able to make it up here. This is the uh, service agreement for the wind system. Uh, between the Department of Emergency Services, the LEPC, and the Sheriff's Office, and the Board of County Commissioners, 
and Innsbruck Logistics. Uh, it's the emergency response notification systems for emergency responders and the general public. It's going to be from April 1st, 2020 through March 31st, 2021 at a cost of $19,350. That's, and that's shared $6,450 each by the LE, LEPC, the Department of Emergency Services, and the Sheriff's Office. This is the same contract that they've had, similar contract they've had for the last six years. Okay. Great. Thank you. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, no motion, please. So moved. Second. Yes. Yes. Thanks. Okay. Uh, water resources. Uh, water resources request the board approve and authorize the president of the board to execute the request for partial payment number three for work in industrial services incorporated for the Auburn Corners Wastewater Treatment Plant upgrade and for the Wastewater Treatment Plant Conversion Project in the amount of four hundred eighty thousand dollars two sixty six point five five. How's that project coming along? I was I drove by the other day. It looks like they got it all torn yeah, up. We're either yeah. at or ahead of schedule. Okay. It's going it's going pretty well actually. The weather's been right, huh? Lately. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, any questions, comments? Okay. Motion to approve, please. So move. Second. Yes. Hey. Yes. Since uh, Adrian. <laughs> no, I was going to get. The next item is our, is our Maximus Consulting Service. The Maximus does our cost share analysis each year for the departments to ensure that we get the funding from the departments that aren't funded by the general fund, that the general fund costs get reimbursed. Uh, this is a contract for March uh, 2020 through June of 2021, and then there's two optional one-year mutual agreed extensions. The amount, the yearly cost is $11,000. Motion, please. So moved. Second. Yes. I, yes. I just have one question. How, sure. how many years have we been using this uh, company? Um, this was the. I'm not sure what this year is. Like this. I started in 07 and we were using it prior to that. I started in 04. Yeah. We, we, okay. did, we did go out and talk to a couple other companies this year. Um, and then what we decided is next. The, this contract kind of gets us to. The point where we're you know, going into new buildings, assuming that that ever happens with getting past this COVID deal, but the uh, you know the, this gets this will this contract if we do the extensions will get us to there, and at that point then we're going to be reevaluating how we charge because a lot of the comp a lot of the departments that are get this cost allocation will be in the new building, so we will be do rent or something along those lines. Definitely, then we'll go back on that. Thanks. Okay. And the next item is just uh, with the governor extending the, uh, the stay-at-home order through June 1st, or May 1st, <laughs> <That'll be nice. laughs> through May 1st, yeah. um, just looking to the policy that was put, the temporary policy that was put in place for the last uh, stay-at-home order, just asking to renew that because we had it as ex uh, ending at effective today. So looking to just do it as a two two week period so we can you know, continue to evaluate where we want to be and then come back on it. This would be through through um, April 22nd, if you if you so. So, Jerry, we, we, we approved it last when? On the 13th or something? 13, yeah, it was the 13th. It was okay. Um, and it was effective through the end of the original stay-at-home order. Which was midnight last Which was midnight last Oh, okay. Day. So we're looking to, just again, just doing a two-week extension, not taking it to the new the new deadline on May 1st, but that way we can come back and reevaluate and make sure we work, we're effectively using the, the taxpayers' money properly. Exactly. And, and this matches up with the FFCRA, the Family First Coronavirus Response Act? It, it does not, it's not a direct connection to it because this is an extension for the state home portion. Okay. The FFCRA is, we're, we're following those rules too because we have to, those went into effect. April 1st, yeah, so 
that, that's kind of another layer on top of it, but we don't, we're not putting that into a policy because it's federal law that we have to follow. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, speaking to that, I mean, you know, a concern that I have is, you know, how long are we going to continue to be able to hold our breath here in the county as far as having full employment right, right now? I mean, people are lining up at record pace, filing for unemployment in this in this country, and um, you know, I, I think we need to seriously start sitting down to evaluate um, what we what our key plan is going to be. I mean, we can do this for a few weeks, but to sit here and insulate ourselves with the with the taxpayers' money, and you know, having people sitting at home maybe not working but still collecting a check while the rest of the society is. Is struggling, you know. So I think we're really going to have to take a hard look, including all the other um, elected officials and their offices, and as well as uh, you know all of our departments. And that's one of the reasons why I had it just for the two weeks. Yeah. Because that's you know the the one thing, fortunately or unfortunately, is that you know being government employees, we're, fought, we're mandated to follow the you know, the Ohio Revised Code and their requirements for. If we, if we did decide to go some other route with this, making sure we're you know, following the rules and following the law. So as we are evaluating that, we're also, we've also been evaluating how the FFCRA would affect right. this also. Okay. You, but you, you get where I'm coming from, yes. right? Yep. I mean, I, I, I understand a higher rise code and I understand government workers and government jobs, but you know, unfortunately, you know, small businesses and little shops, mom and pop shops, even big companies, the companies are very profitable. They're not able to keep full on staffs to stay alive. I mean, some of them are completely sending everybody home with no pay. No, I, 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 I understand that. And yeah. that's, you know, that's why we're looking at it, because what we don't want to do is do something that runs afoul of the law and then we're right. paying more. I get it. <laughs> but I, I, I think so it's, what I would just suggest, and hopefully I'm just worst case scenario here, but I, you know, I have a feeling this thing's going to drag out longer than maybe we think. Um, and we need to sit down and start putting a, a real game plan together as far as, you know, a step by step of what that means, what it looks like. And Kathy, Kathy and myself have had a number of conversations with Laura about what we need to do. What, yeah. what are our options? Where, where do we yeah. go? And I, and I would assume that, you know, a policy is in place. I would think now that it's common sense, but we're not uh, bringing on any new employees right now or right. unless it's absolutely necessary for certain, you know, maybe emergency services or the health, There's you know, something like that. But, I mean, you know, I know there were some openings out, job openings out there. And, Making sure we're not still just you know plowing ahead blindly. No, we are not. We've yeah. actually there's actually you know. one that we were ready to hire the day that, the day before the state home order was going into effect. And okay. We talked to that individual. And yeah. I mean, I know explain, that. Explain to him eventually. You know, it was it was the, the courier position. Explain right. that. Now. We still we still would like to hire you, but it doesn't make any sense for us to bring you on right, right now. And he was he completely understood. So. Yeah. And I mean that goes along with you know spending too. I you know I know we've already talked about this. And I know the county's mindful of it, but as far as um, big spending goes, you know I'm a little hesitant to commit to anything right now. You know, including road projects or you know I mean what's until you know the future. I mean nobody truly does, but during this I would I'm, I'm a little hesitant to commit to anything big ticket right now. You know. Are the departments, you know, when people retire, are they not replacing them right away as well? We haven't, they, there's been nobody retired at this point, but yeah. Anybody to share something? Now we have, we have, right now we have like three or four open positions we're not filling. We're not filling up. Okay. We did have one retirement recently too, over at um, aging, but we had that person we had already hired prior and had some shadowing, so person was already in place. It's not like we replaced that person we just retired. Okay. Thanks, Jerry. Um, <clears throat> okay, so where are we at here? Uh, okay, motion on 19, please. I so move. Second. Yes. Hi. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, and then, uh, Tom, since you're here, um, could you maybe just give us a quick update of where we're at today and 
Okay, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good question. <laughs> good question. Um, right, so right now we are, well, last time I checked, end of the day yesterday we were at uh, 40 cases. Um, off the top of my head, I can tell you, but we don't have any deaths right now. Um, I will say that at the state level, the number of deaths as a percentage of the number of, of cases is about 2.3%, between 2 and between two and three percent, which is pretty startling. Um, there's a selection bias there. We're only testing the sick people. Sick people are more likely to succumb than the others. That said, as those cases go up, that percentage probably isn't going to change too much. So we're we're still um, still facing something here. Um, everybody wants to know when. Nobody knows when. Uh, the the reality, if we look back to the great flu pandemic of 100 years ago. It wasn't the first wave that took everybody out. It was the second wave because everybody thought we were done. Mm -hmm. Just a cautionary tale. Um, we just, this is this has been really tough to get folks to stay home. Um, it's a tough thing to do. Right? Not everybody's staying home comfortably. They're staying home. They're just that mm -hmm. paycheck and so forth. We need to support whatever they're doing to be able to stay home um, because <laughs> they keep pushing to come back out. As soon, sure. as, we, as soon as we lose that, we're really putting the community in jeopardy. We've done a lot of conversation about the Amish. Uh, we've been doing as much as possible to dispel a lot of that. Yes, very visible, but so are the packed parking lots. Um, as a whole, the county is doing pretty good. Um, I've had lots of conversations with Amish bishops. I've had sit downs with the Amish school board. Uh, the uh, school board superintendent actually reached out to me the other day and should, said, should we just go ahead and close for the rest of the year? I mean, that was. So that they're being, they are being proactive, and yes, there are still some churches open, but there are some churches that are closed, and that's kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so progress is being made, more to, more to come. Uh, the, the sheriff and I were out with uh, Mayor uh, Benefield yesterday and took some shots, so we're going to try to see if we can't find a billboard to put up with some six-foot spacing stuff in between us, yeah, and we so that, yeah, yeah. A, lot of, a lot of cooperation there. Um, just so that you guys hear it, I know I've said it before, but everybody we've worked with and the county government all the different parts have been fantastic. Well, we want to thank you. I know you're, um, I, I couldn't tell you how uh, thankful we are to have you here at this time. And, and uh, you've gotten thrown right into the fire, obviously, but uh, you've really become a part of this community and this, this county. And um, it's it's evident people are looking toward you for leadership. You've done a fantastic job. I just well, I, I do I do appreciate that. And I'm not saying that this isn't this is a blowing smoke. If it was if it was the plan that I was supposed to be a health commissioner during this, I couldn't ask for a better team. Right. The, the, the the health department we've got, they're they're working. Um, they're not blinking. They're just saying whatever you need. Just yeah. do. I've so seen them out. We went to weekends. We went to you know. Well, if you, if you need any assistance from whatever we can do as a board and yeah. as commissioners, or, I mean, I know everybody in this room will drop what they're doing to help whatever you need. But um, again, we, I we couldn't ask for a better person to have them in the position right now, I think. So, but thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. One question, yeah. uh, Diane Jones, yes. Township. Can you clarify or at least elucidate for us how much bed space is available um, devoted to COVID yeah, at Geauga Hospital and in Geauga County in total? Yeah, that actually, the question would probably be better for Roger um, at, at EMA um, okay. in conjunction with the hospitals in terms of coordinating the, the hospital capacity. Um, I know that uh, you know, we're, we're in a much better place than obviously right our, now, our, yeah. Our, our, our right neighbors now. Coyote and Summit. Yeah, but yeah, we still share a huge border with Coyote there is, the County. We, we we are sharing more than just a border with Coyote mm -hmm. County. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of our uh, cases and contacts, and that's that's again to go back. We we often get the questions about what zip codes are folks in. They're they're not getting in at home. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons, one of several reasons we don't put it out by zip code. They're getting it at work. They're getting it out of the community and so forth. They just come in back to that zip code. We have an awful lot of folks that are connected either as patients of or as healthcare providers that are providing service outside of the county but reside in, and that's where you saw that large number um, where, you, where, where we did. Uh, Further, can you clarify about the one case that 
was attributed initially to Geauga County and then was retracted? Yeah, so that's just, there's a, uh, that's how the cases are, are originally reported. There was a question as to, um, because that was one of the early cases, I think that was yes. case three right. or four or something right. like that, right. where um, because we have 113 different health departments in the state, uh, we do cooperate, but when you get a case that's reported in one, they weren't sure if it was our resident or their resident. As soon as we entered it into the system, it's called the Ohio Disease Reporting System of the ERS, um, that is a statewide system, it's a database. We entered it because we thought it was our case. It goes to the state, it gets stuck in the big system, and it takes forever to try to retract it. So yeah, that's that That's that one. Um, yeah. It was actually, I, I'm not positive, I think it was a county county case. Yeah, well, yeah. as was reported here, yeah. it was a, a, a county county case. In terms, real quick, I just want to ask you your opinion on the meeting we're having here today. I mean, I'm kind of conflicted about it as far as, I know we have business to take care of, and there's certain things you know, statutorily we have to get done so other things can move forward. But I, and I, I think we've done our best maybe as, you know, spacing out, but still we're coming in here touching door handles and, to, and all this yeah. stuff and whatever. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing is signing these documents, you know, and having this done in a timely fashion. I mean, you know, when the state has tried to alleviate that with online meetings, which yeah. you, we can't <laughs> sign online, you know, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah, and it's still not. But it's super not, clear that we can undo it that I way. Don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, it's confusing. conflicting reports, depending on who you ask. It's been confusing yeah. to read, but I mean, what's your take on what we're doing here today? I mean, yeah. Should we so, keep doing this, or should we put these this, off as long as possible? I, 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 this, this is a fantastic photo op for how to do a meeting if you have to do a public meeting. What we've been suggesting, I mean, you guys are space. It's how we do our board meetings. Mm -hmm. And I keep reminding my staff that when we think about the messaging we're putting out, it should be the same messaging that we're doing internally, right? Yeah. You know, there's nothing special. Mm -hmm. So this is how we do our board meetings. Um, what we are encouraging folks to do is think about, with the right setup, how many people should come in. And depending on what you anticipate, getting some support at the door. Um, we, we were sure we were going to get flooded at the last Board of Health meeting because it's sure. you know, public health. Sure. It's game, so it worked out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is, this is how you do a meeting while you can. One, my rule of thumb is whenever I go, you know, whenever I leave my office or go back into my office, I'm in my hands. You know, and so my suggestion is, if you're coming in here before you do that business, if you're getting the hands washed, you're not going to be passing stuff back and forth. Right. Right. I notice I've gotten better at touching my face. Like I'm very, kind of, you know, I used to always feel like yeah, I have not. <laughs> I keep, I keep trying. I know. The more you think about it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. I have one quick question. Um, I understand the process with the health department. If somebody tests positive, then your work really starts to begin where you have to uh, contact all contacts mm -hmm. and do all the things. My question is for the people who are asked to stay home, their doctors are saying, yeah, we're pretty sure you have it, but we're not going to have you tested. Mm -hmm. Is the health department aware of those people? No. Okay, so then it's up to those people, it's up to yeah. those people yeah. to contact who they've been in touch with. And yeah, yeah, so you, you have a, a very formal structured thing. <laughs> and if we had the tests, I mean, if we, if we had enough tests, those doctors would be ordering those tests, just right. like they would have with, with any other illness you have. Um, and that's been one of the biggest challenges is because we don't know who has it. We only know who's been tested for it and that test is positive. Because that's all that gets reported. Um, and so, because, well, partly there's no way of confirming whether somebody self-report us is even valid. We, we get calls all the time, I've got it, and they're not in the case. And so, you know, I just wondered if the doctor came out and said, I'm pretty sure this is what you have, don't even bother coming. I didn't know if they it's, had it's, had it's, had it's, it would be very good advice to heed. Um, <laughs> right now, you know, we have the great big stay-at-home order, which really is. Everybody should be actually behaving as though they're in quarantine, with the exception of if you needed to live, go do it. Mm -hmm. Nobody's really adhering to that level of control. Um, but that is that is already in place, and it's a state order. The next level is that, that self-quarantine, and you know, it's a confusing time when we all use the same word of quarantine, but that, that voluntary quarantine, that's really the same thing as a stay-at-home order. Anybody who's symptomatic of anything right now should really be staying at home anyway. I mean, that's what we do with our staff. 
you come, you don't come in if you're symptomatic of, of anything. You call, you say, I've got a headache, I've got a cough, I've got a fever, whatever. We don't anticipate that anybody currently that's employed for us is going to be able to get tested unless they get severely ill. Mm -hmm. right? We don't have any. But that person's home that day, and then we go three days before we bring them back, three days of asympt of, of asymptomatic uh, situation. So if they've got a GI bug for three days, they're, do they're down for those three days, and then it's three more days before they come back. Because, you know, everybody's stretched those so thin anyway. Uh, you don't want anything coming to the office. And there's virtually not a symptom out there that is not associated in some way with COVID-19. There's a GI association with COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, and the, as we continue to go through this, we learn more and more about those. So, yeah, if, uh, if somebody gets a letter, from me that says this is an order of quarantine. Now you have the law behind it. Now they really legally, it's a, it's a misdemeanor if they leave the home for any reason other than medical care. And those are the folks we talk, we talk to those folks on a regular basis because obviously they have other needs, we want to see how they're doing. They are, you, that. are you collecting the data of um, recoveries too? Or do you guys keep well, so that's, the, that's um, one of the challenges. Um, I, <laughs> I, I did a, a my morning and evening Facebook posts, and I did a, a, the morning Facebook post on that one. Um, so someone took great offense to blank it. <laughs> but, but, you know, I'm, getting, I'm getting a pretty thick skin on this. This all social immediately. But yeah, the, the 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 challenge with the recovery is, is because we don't know who have it, who has it. We don't know who's recovered from it. What we what I'm going to start doing, and it's going to take me a couple of days to get resources pulled together to go through all the files and everything. Um, is to start saying we've issued this number of orders of isolation and we've lifted this number of orders of isolation. Because the orders of isolation go to cases and then the, 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 the order to lift it also goes to those same people. So we'll start to see folks coming have out. Have you had any of those yet? We have. Yeah. I've, I, I've issued, I um, can't tell you how many that I've issued for quarantine, but I think three or four already. Okay. Um, just went out the last couple of days lifting those and they, they Now, again, I don't know that they're recovered. Right. They, okay. meet, they meet a certain the definition. Time. That's yeah. another yeah. thing they're really careful about. The research is very unclear as to whether somebody is no longer contagious just because they've, they've passed through the prescribed process of So I guess who's, next number of who's um, I mean, not to put you in there, but yeah. like, whose uh, responsibility is it then? I mean, the, it seems like the hospitals are just overwhelmed. They don't have time to really collect that data like right. if you'd like them to right. or whatever. But that's so where the job place, is. But it? that's right. That's that's yeah. where the that's where the data exists. Right. And but they again selection bias. They only know those folks who've been hospitalized. Right. It's it's a reportable disease, but it's only reported if you have a test confirming that you had it. Hmm. So what any of the numbers that we talked about are referring to probably about three or four percent. Of the actual number of people who have that's really going on, and so when we talk about the numbers, it's like it's not really representative of, of any type of random sample of the. Of the whole. And then, as far as Cleveland and the clinic goes, yeah. I mean, you know, you see like New York going, you know, it's like the apocalypse. They're saying with yeah. the hospital, you know, yeah. thousands of cases. But what's going on in Cleveland right now? I mean, are they still pretty? Uh, they got it under control, or is it? Is it um, it's kind of subjective um, thought on that. I, so objectively, what they're doing uh, that separates them from a lot of other places is if we were to issue a order of quarantine, meaning somebody's been identified as a, a contact to a case, um, normally they'd be ordered to, to reside at home. Now, because of the stress on the healthcare systems, um, we have modified that so that if they're a healthcare worker, as long as they're asymptomatic, they can go to provide that healthcare. So to me, that's that signal that there's a healthcare system under considerable stress because that's not the kind of folks who want coming into the healthcare system, but because of capacity, they have to bring them in. I see. So that to me, that's that's a signal that they're under stress. Okay. Okay. Well, good. Well, thank you again. Yeah. Thank you very much. You, you, you're, Extremely informative and helpful in these times. Okay, um, so Thank you. okay, so number twenty. The co commissioner's uh, this answers my question, I guess. Uh, the co commissioner's office is requesting the board cancel session for Tuesday, April fourteenth, two thousand twenty. Um, I assume unless something earth shattering comes up that you need uh, us to be here or more things, you know, we can. 
played out by a year, but I would say for now, I'm okay with that. Again, I don't think it's the, the risk versus the reward of us gathering every time, you know, once a week. I don't know if it's there yet, you know. <laughs> I, I think we're safe, you know, every two weeks for a while. You yeah. Know. Just, you know, what do you think? You okay with that? Okay. And if, again, if something, you know, we can beat, we can get right. together can quickly if we have to. Okay. All right, a motion uh, number 20, please. I so move. Second. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, and then as far as any other meetings, we don't have any scheduled, so we cancel. Yeah. So then we will be back here again on the 21st. Okay. And again, I think, you know, if something comes up and we need to get together quickly, we can do that, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, um, any other questions or comments? Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you for coming, everybody. Yeah.